All right, so John and I are going to split ours uh, up. We're going to talk to you a little bit about uh, biosecurity, like you heard um, Dr. Spiro talk. We have to step up our biosecurity, so we really got to think about the things we're going to do and how we're going to uh, how we're going to move forward. So, I'm sure everybody has been doing some thinking on some of the things that. You know, what are we going to do? What, what's that shield going to be that we're going to do on our farms to really protect us from biosecurity? And you know when it comes down? It comes down to all of you and me. We're the growers. We're the ones that makes the decision on who comes on our farms. If we don't stop it, nobody else is. So there might be some unpleasant um, situations, but we need to deal with those. Certainly very important. So when we're talking about our plan, we need to think about really these th three things. Our production site, what are the things that we can do in our production site, the people coming in, and then also um, equipment and vehicles. So let's talk about our production site. What are the, some of the things that we can do? Dr. Spiro talked about this line, this dirty line, and this clean line. What are some of the things? Anybody got any ideas of some of the things we can do? Change your footwear, Change your footwear. right, Tina. So. We can think about from each house, a lot of people have any rooms, some, of, some people don't have any rooms. We can put separate shoes from house to house. We can put on the little slip-on booties uh, from house to house. We've got the plastic ones uh, also. So another thing that um, we have done on our farm is trying to think of some of the things that we carry in and out. We're carrying in and out buckets. We're carrying, I have chicken picker uppers. <laughs> I call them the regents. So we shouldn't be carrying those in and out. So we thought I took two buckets per house, cleaned them all up, disinfected them, we use like a 10% um, bleach solution, cleaned them up, cleaned up our chicken picker uppers. We put up little hooks in our houses. They, those buckets and those chicken picker uppers stay in those houses. They're dedicated to that. So when we're picking up chickens and you know, you're driving down with your golf cart or your gator, your tractor or whatever, you can sit one bucket outside the door but when, so when you're dumping your dead chickens out, you can, you're not taking that bucket outside, don't let it touch anything outside, but you're keeping that kind of that clean and dirty line. So I think it's just those type of things that we really need to think about to, to take it to that, that certainly to that next uh, level. People. My gosh, my mother comes over, you know, she drives right down the barn. I'm like, Mom, you cannot drive down to the barn. She's bringing us lunch, but, you know, call us, you know, we'll, we'll come up. But, you know, it's just this re-education of things that we just really don't, don't think about. The people that come on our farm. I had a um, grower call me last week and said, Jenny, I was home for the day, and, you know, she works off the farm. She says, the electric person came up from the electric company to read the meter, you know. Farmer next door has, you know, grows for Amic, one grows for Mount Air, one grows for Allen, one grows for Purdue. So um, they didn't have the smart meters yet. So we worked, uh, don't you know, most of you know that I sit on the DPI board also. So we draft a letter, Bill worked on, John and I worked on to send out to the allied industries to, you know, let them know there's, you know, there's this threat of avian inv influenza. We've got to do everything we can. If you've got to go to a farm, don't drive down to the production area. Put on your booties. You got to go read the meter. Go read the meter. Walk back to the truck. Throw the booties away there. So I think those will just be the simple things. And we have to be that first um, line of defense. I just put on our, before you, between the house and the production area, I just turned up some orange um, vegetable baskets. I'm trying to think, now what can I do to stop people? And lo and behold, I got a phone call from my biosecurity sign that had a phone number on it. It was a trash man. And I forgot because we had told him that we were going to move our trash dumpster up, up to the house. I really don't want it up to the house because it's ugly. And I, when I pull up my lane, I like the way that it looks. So I said, well, can you, you, he comes back next week. I said, not this week, but next week we'll move it up to the house. So, that, so just those little things that you, you, know, you don't think about. So think about those things. And then um, equipment, uh, vehicles. Think about it. John's going to talk a little bit about, you know, washing equipment. Um, when we talk about equipment, one of the most important uh, pieces we have, what's this? How many germs do you think are on this thing? Where does it go? It goes everywhere with us. How many people taking the chicken house with them? Mm-hmm. So you might want to think about while you're washing your hands before you go in the chicken house, 
Keep some disinfectant wipes, clean your cell phone, or leave it, don't take it in, and clean it when you get done. There's just these little things that we really just really don't uh, think about. So these are really the absolute things that we just need to think about and the things that we do uh, on our farms. No backyard poultry. I think we all know that, but we just need to say it and let everybody know. If you have any neighbors that have backyard poultry, the Maryland Department of Ag has sent out the poultry premise registration. Just make sure that everybody gets registered so if there is an outbreak that everybody will know. Uh, so, I mean, we see backyard poultry everywhere. You know, on Route 213, there's somebody that has backyard poultry and they're on the road half of the time. I have a heart attack when I drive past them. I have to check to make sure they are registered. Um, but no pet birds, the same, you know, the same thing. I think we all, we all know a lot of this. Tina talked about, you know, dedicated footwear. I don't care who comes on your farm. They either put plastic boots on or they have dedicated footwear. You'll see my grandson in a little while, he has dedicated footwear when he comes stays right in the, we have, call it the man cave that we put our boots on. But it's, it's a cheap thing that we can do for something that can devastate our industry and devastate each one of us. Most of us have mortgage payments and um, things that we need to pay for. So, and if you're worried uh, somebody's gonna wear them off, paint them pink, paint them purple, I don't care, do something so somebody's not gonna take them um, off the farm. Uh, we talked about this, um, unauthorized visitors. You know, when we're not on our farm, we really don't know who's coming up there. We really don't. If you, anything you can do to keep unauthorized visitors, and it's hard because we've got feed trucks, you know, coming on our farm. We've got people um, delivering propane. So, but like I said, it's our job. You see that propane coming, truck coming up, and they haven't disinfected? Put a little pump-up sprayer out there. I think most of us now have probably mailboxes up. John's going to talk about those. You know, put a little pump-up sprayer out there. Can't hurt. So make sure that you do have all the personal uh, protective equipment. John and I have, uh, you know, the coveralls. Anybody that's coming up, you can put them in your mailbox. Uh, there's all kinds of foot, oops, footwear. We've got the little cloth things. We have little cloth footies. We have the plastic ones. We have a hair net or head net uh, also. Disinfectant wipes, oh, and then our, just our hand, hand sanitizer. So a lot of things, don't forget to get your sign tonight, put your phone number on there. It worked, it worked for me just, just last week. So just some things uh, really to think about. Uh, things are gonna break down, and we're gonna have to call one of the poultry stores, I call them, you know, to come fix things. So, and they're all, all are certainly aware, but that's our job to check on them. You know, where are you gonna make them park? Make sure that they've got their protective equipment on. Make sure you have a place for them to dispose of it when they come on to your farm. Oh, morta oh, mortality. We've got to be doing a good job of composting. That's certainly very important. Because if we don't do a good job of composting, then we get all these little critters. And we don't we need that because that, they, just spread, they just spread disease. So some other things to think about. Educate your employees. Educate your families. People that have um, employees, same thing. You know, they need dedicated footwear, dedicated coveralls or clothing, something that they, they leave on your farm. They put it on when they get there, between that dirty and clean line. Think about, you know, those kind of things. Washing your hands, just very simple, basic things. We all talk about the flu, you know, and colds. The more you wash your hands, <clears throat> certainly the better off you'll be. So again, just back to those absolute things. No backyard poultry, we've got to have dedicated clothes, dedicated footwear, no unauthorized visitors, uh, personal protective clothing. You can buy this, I mean, all this, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon. You can go to the, you know, I call G&M sales and they send it to me. That works uh, very well. And then um, also um, do a good job with your composting. So without these things, you really don't have a biosecurity plan. And you need to talk, to talk to your family about it. Talk to your partner about it. You know, just different things that we really don't think about. Oops, okay. All right, so now we're gonna go through this. We're getting late, so I'll try and go through this quickly. How's that? If you have questions, just raise your hand, I'll slow down. Okay, some factors to consider. You all know where your farms are located. There's things you need to be aware of. Are you located next to a big pond? Well, if you build a new farm, you have a storm runner, storm water 
pond, so we have that. We're kind of making things a little harder for farmers. But we want to be aware. We wear an area where there's a lot of waterfowl. Who lives next to our farm? We need to know who our neighbors are. Do they have poultry? Do they have backyard poultry? Are we located next to a big road? I mean, there was a farm I saw put on a road the other day, and as I drive by, I can see all the feathers from the live haul trucks already sucked up into the cool cells. So we want to make sure we do what we can to keep our farm safe. And if you have any of those things, we have to do a little more. But things we recommend, visitor logs. Visitor logs are great because then we know if there's anything happens, who was on your farm? We can start tracing these diseases and find out who we need to really worry about. Or if somebody brought it on, we can start looking and see where this disease went. The thing about visitor logs is we put them in a mailbox. Love mailboxes. Go buy one of the biggest ones you can because then there's lots of room for spiders. Just joking. <laughs> then you can take and stuff some uh, personal protective wear in there. You know, we can put in some coveralls, some boots and all that. That way, if anybody's coming on your farm and you aren't there, you can tell them the clothing is there for them and tell them where it's at. And these are a real easy way to put it on or if you have somebody show up, you know where it is. It's right there at the entrance to your farm. So it makes it real simple to do. The other thing is, put up a sign. Do signs stop disease? Signs, no, but they stop people. It's interesting, we've actually had calls lately, people asking why are we seeing these biosecurity signs? I think that's great, because that means people are noticing that we're worried about our birds and what we're doing. It gives us an opportunity to talk to them about why farmers are putting them up and what we need to do to protect our birds. Okay, at the same place, if we're at the same place, we're still where we put our mailbox up. What about putting a chain or something across the road there to stop people from just driving on in? Jenny put up their little cones or upside down uh, vegetable baskets. That's it. Go get some soccer cones. You can get them at Walmart. They're cheap. Put those across there. Anything that will stop people from driving on down. That way they're thinking. Uh, this, again, if you have all this, I mean, he's pulling across the chain, but his mailbox is sitting right there. So everything is right there for anybody that comes on the farm. So he's got it all right there. It's not, oh, well, where am I going to look? Where am I going to find it? This is a camera on another farm. This way, anybody pulls on their farm, they can't see it. They live a little ways away around the corner. But if I pull on their farm, it takes a picture of me and my vehicle, and it sends it to them. And they know I'm there. Great thing about it, you know who's on your farm. Bad thing about it, takes pictures of does in the middle of the night. I don't think they'd have complained if it was a big buck, but they were complaining it was a doe. Locks. Locks are very important. Keep things, well, keep things locked down. We do have a lot of crime going on. We need to keep people out. Has anybody paid attention to what happened down in South Carolina last spring and summer? You heard about it, didn't you? 200,000 birds killed. Somebody went in and started playing with controllers and everything else. We want to make sure we're doing what we can to prevent that from happening here. So lock doors, lock things up. Let's see, bird exclusion. Dr. Shapiro's talked about this a lot. I just want to add this. When we birds go out, we often leave our indoors open for days on end. And I see it all the time. Maybe we need to shut them if we're not working in there, just shut the doors. Kick on your minimum ventilation to keep it aired out. But we need to shut those doors because birds, after about the first 24 hours, they're going to start going in there. Those birds are possibly going to bring some type of disease, parasite or something. I'm, you know, northern fowl mites, I've seen that happen before. So we want to make sure we keep those birds out. Rodent control. Again, you don't want to see this, rat, rats running down the rafters. I had a really cool picture, I can't find it. It's a rat drinking from a nipple drinker. <laughs> and it's, I mean, these are things you see in chicken houses if things are not done right. Now I will say, you know, we do a good job around here keeping our stuff out, whether you use the homemade type of uh, bait stations or you buy the bait stations, we're doing a good job. This is what we want to see. We want to keep our pads clean. Dr. Shapiro mentioned that. Um, beetle control, another one we don't think a lot about. Beetles can harbor disease and carry them from one flock to the next. So we want to make sure we have a good beetle control program to try and knock those bugs down. Foot baths. I'm a fan of foot baths when they're done right. That foot bath is not right. You can smell it from where I'm taking the picture. This person should have known better. That's wor you'd have been worse off stepping in that than just going straight in the house. Strew them. If you do it right, they work. But remember, we don't want to see this. We want to see something like, well, like this. See, he's got a good clean foot bath. If we can get Jenny's grandson to play in the water and <laughs> clean his boots, we can train our employees and us to do it. How old? Four years old can understand a foot bath. So we want to make sure we do this. Clean things up. Here's a brush. Remember, when we clean our shoes to get it right, we got to get that mud off or it's not going to do any good in disinfecting. So we've got to get the debris off. 
So we want to make sure we clean things up. One thing we might want to do, it's hard to see in this picture, but flat shoes with no, no big grooves. By doing that, you're not going to get a lot of debris stuck in the bottom of your shoe. Work great, except for if you step outside on ice or brand new litter, kind of gets slippery. So we got to be careful there. I'm a fan of dedicated footwear in each house. When I had a farm, that's what I did. Each house had its own footwear, slip in when you go in, slip it off when you come out. Boots are cheap. They're not that expensive. Dr. Shapiro showed one way where you sit down on a bench, take your shoes off, throw your legs over the other side of the bench, put the other shoes on. Just a simple change like that. Granted, we have a lot of houses without ante rooms, so we need to find other things out, other ways to do it. But you all are very creative, and, and I'm sure you can find ways to make these kind of systems work. Foot baths, whatever works for you, but you need to find a way to make it work on your farm, and then you need to be the one that always does it so that if you have other people that work with you, they see you doing it. Because if people will watch you, and if you're not doing it, they're going to figure they don't have to. Uh, hunting waterfowl, again, kind of risky right now. I don't know if we have any big waterfowl hunters in here, but uh, if you're going to hunt waterfowl, take extra precautions or maybe take a year off. Uh, not my place to call that, but be very careful. You laugh at that. All right, be careful around convenience stores. Love it. This was a pitcher that used to have a whole bunch of poop here, but by the time we got there, the rain washed it off, so it's a pitcher of a nice curb. But look at this truck here. Pull into their gas station. He's sitting there with that. Do you think that spread manure as he drove down the road? Yeah. Do you think it's kind of a good way to be? Can you imagine what the front of that truck looks like? These are the people you're dealing with, so when you go to the store, make sure you don't take those shoes back down. This is where everybody stops to get their coffee and donuts in the morning. You don't want to pick something up from somebody else that went there. Again, farm dedicated footwear. Water ponds, geese, we need to find ways to discourage them from coming in. I'm a fan of a young retriever, Labrador, Chesapeake, doesn't matter. Just a young retriever, let them go out there and chase the heck out of them. It's legal, you're not harming them. So there are some things we can do as well. You can get permission to addle eggs where you go out and shake their eggs up or break their eggs. You have to get permission. There are legal ways to do it. There are some ways to get permits to do deprivation hunts, but there are ways to help lower the number of waterfowl around your farm. Uh, bird droppings, we've covered that. Washing hands. I know a lot of y'all don't have places to wash your hands on a farm. I was on a farm the other day and I said, well, you know, we came out of the house, we're kind of dirty. And they picked this bucket off, off the back of their, uh, they're a four-wheeler. And they carry this bucket every day. They go out when they start going around, fill it up with clean, soapy water. You're done. Had a little chlorine in there. You washed up, you were done. Real simple. Didn't cost them anything. This is one of those hand sanitizers. You've seen them in a lot of buildings. You just walk by, you hit them. Put it right where you go in and out of your chicken house door. Your hands go everywhere. You pick up the birds with what? Your hands. You pick everything up you do is with your hands. Let's worry about cleaning our hands a little bit more, and that should help. What do we tell all the kindergarten kids? Wash your hands. So, works for us as well. Wash equipment. We want to make sure equipment's clean. We know that washing equipment will help stop the spread of disease. Some good data out there. One we need to remember, here's the PLT crew showing up to spread PLT. Look at all the manure on those wheels and everything. Hose them off for them. You know, have them stop, say, hey, I want to wash that off for you because you don't want to bring all that manure from somebody else's farm on your farm. Remember, you just cleaned out and disinfected. You want to keep it that way. Jenny covered cell phones. Okay, remember this, you are the front line of the defense. What happens on your farm, I can't control. You're the only one that can control your farm. So you are the ones that need to stand up and say, this is what the limits are and this is what we're gonna do. And don't be afraid to tell people, hey look, I know my motor's broke, but you need to put on this equipment before you can go work on it. Or if you're coming down here, I want you to do this. It's your farm, you set the rules. Again, the absolutes. No backyard poultry, farm dedicated footwear and clothes. No unauthorized vehicle, vehicles, visitors. Visitors wear protective clothing and make sure we take care of our dead birds properly. What we would suggest even better, let's get some signage. We see a lot of that, that's going good. Visitor logs, limit access. You know, if someone doesn't need to come on your farm, like you need to meet with a banker or something, we've been telling the bankers, meet at McDonald's or some other restaurant, you know, go down to the donut house, go down to Dunkin' Donut, buy them a cup of coffee while you sign the papers. There's no reason they have to come to the farm other than convenience for you. So maybe it's meet somewhere else to do these kind of negotiations. Beetle control, rodent control, clean up litter, wash hands, wash all your equipment. 
If we do all this, it's going to help prevent disease. Not only AI, but it will help with all of our poultry diseases. So it's going to be a win-win for us if we do this. If we never get AI, which I hope we don't, if we do these things, it's going to help us with other diseases as well. And with that, since we only have one or two visitors, and I know them pretty well, we can kind of skip through this. But what I want to say, if you're visiting farms, if you don't need to go down to the farm, meet them at the gate. If your truck doesn't need to go on the farm, don't have the truck go on the farm. Keep your windows shut. We pick up a lot of unwanted visitors, you know, and passengers in our car when we leave our windows down. Let's, let's make sure we don't do that. Some simple things we can do to help farmers out. If you need to go to a farm, just go to the part you need to. Don't go to everywhere. Don't go wandering around. And with that, remember our goal is to stop the spread of disease. So let's all work together on this and let's make sure we get it done.